about that old blue Peterbilt heading up uh, the northbound uh, 75 there? You got a radio on in there? Yeah, go right here. Well, who we got in there and uh, what you up to today? Uh, just left 75, Colonel Shot. Head back to Virginia. Well, 10 4. Well, that's a pretty interesting truck you got there. Why don't you go ahead and tell me about it? That's about autism. We have a child that's autistic. And we built the truck to get some awareness out for autism. We named the project one of many. Uh, she's just one of many children. So uh, we decided to do, uh, you know, the project of one of many. Not out of puzzle pieces, which the puzzle pieces are the symbol for autism. Well, it's a good looking truck there. I'm sure lots of folks like it. Uh, being there at the 75 Chrome shop, uh, what do they say to you when they see the truck there? Oh, they loved it. You know, it, it, it got a lot of attention, you know, for the awareness of uh, autism. A lot of people came to look at it, the craftsmanship of the, of the truck. They thought it was just a great thing for the meaning of autism to help get awareness out for children. Well, that's great.
with a truck like that, uh, we got to get a good look at it there at the show. How long does it take to put a truck like that together? Uh, we purchased the truck from Fitzgerald Bridal Kits in October. Um, started with uh, four state trucks on building the truck, uh, of making all the puzzle pieces. We started uh, the end of October and got the truck uh, built April the 30th, or March the 30th, in order to unveil it um, April the 1st for National Autism Month, which is April. The whole month of April is National Autism Month. 10 4. Well, what were some of the challenges in putting together a truck like that? Uh, painting uh, all the puzzle pieces, trying to get the, the whole scheme behind it from front to finish. We just didn't want to concentrate on one area, so we had to try to work it to where we could start at the front of the truck and end up at the back of the truck with the whole concept. There, there's over 2,000 puzzle pieces on the truck. They were all cut out of uh, eighth inch aluminum and uh, they were all plug welded on a piece of 3 16th aluminum sheet. So the guys had to drill two holes and plug weld from underneath. So there were 2,000 of them on there and they had over 640 hours, man hours, into cutting and welding the puzzle pieces on to get it prepped, ready to go to paint. And we'd like to say special thanks to everyone that helped with it, uh, with their product on the truck. Oh, we have a couple special pieces that were put on the truck um, that makes the truck, you know, kind of special. Now, when you're not out uh, riding around in this truck, uh, what are some of the other things that you do there, work-wise? We all shingles. We're, we're based out of Virginia. We have building material. So we... Uh, we all, uh, from Maine to uh, Alabama, Monday through Friday, we have 15 new glider kits, and um, so we, uh, we have building material up and down the East Coast. Um, we, we run all glider kits. Roger that. Now, uh, are you, do you find yourself in a truck as well, or uh, what, what's your role in the company? Well, I, I work in the office and run, run the shop. My son does a lot of dispatching, and I go out and see customers. I've been trucking now for about 36 years, so we, we have a real good company, you know, of a, and customer list that we haul building material for. Now, I like to ask a lot of guys that have experience this way, uh, if, there is, if you come across a new guy that's uh, new in the seat and he wants to get out there and try his hand at uh, running freight across these here uh, 48 uh, states, uh, contiguous states. So what would you say to a guy that was wanting to, that's uh, about a year out into driving, what were some of the things that you would share with him to help him uh, do a bit better there with his job? And go out and give 110 percent. You know, respect the people that you haul for. You know, the customers, they pay all of our bills. Um, try to deliver on time and give 110 percent to do your job. As long as you guys, uh, you know, go out, take care of your truck, you know, it's, uh, it's a real nice piece of machinery um, that needs to be taken care of um, with respect. And it shows what quality of a driver that you are of the appearance of your truck. So what if a guy doesn't have a fancy custom up truck like this here? Are you saying that just clean it up anyway? Sure, you know. All trucks, like, you know, I think they should be kept clean because that is a big appearance of, of them. You know, be polite to their customers. You know, go out and help the other guy. You know, the, the next man, kind of listen to your older guys. The older guys has been out there a long time. They're there to help you guys. You know, one of my best friends, he taught me 36 years ago, is if you get out and you hustle, you do your job you'll make it in the trucking industry. If you're hustling, it'll show. If you're not hustling, it'll show. That's correct. You know, we've got drivers. we got drivers that hustle. 
make a great living. Wouldn't go nowhere. We've got drivers that have been with us 15 years. Then we got guys that just don't get out of bed in the morning. They don't deliver on time. And then their paycheck is, is a, you know, cut in half. And then they wonder why they're not treated the same. They are treated the same, but you just got to get out there and hustle to get it. Well, let me ask you this. Some guys may uh, look at you and say, well, this, uh, this, this, this gentleman here, he's got a fleet of trucks and uh, they want to grow from one truck to, uh, to several trucks. Uh, what would you say to a guy that was wanting to uh, increase the number of trucks? What would he need to look out for? Or what would he need to really pay attention to and, uh, and, uh, and do to grow his number of trucks in his fleet? You know, it's interesting you asked that, Chris. We were having lunch after the awards and a gentleman asked me the same question. You know, what has made me where I am today? It's, it's find a good customer, be loyal to that customer, deliver his freight, take care of his freight. You take care of the customer, the customer will take care of you. The small customers are the ones that want to be taken care of by the small trucking companies um, because they're not just a, another person hauling freight. Yeah, you're not the first guy to say that uh, in terms of how you take care of customers and, and do your best. Uh, you know, one hand washes the other. That's correct. Um, and that's what got me in, you know, the where I am today. Um, I hauled for, you know, a customer and started out with one truck. And, and, you know, I did him the best job I could do. And the next thing you know, he asked me, hey, do you think you could do more for us? And do more. And, and we grew and we grew and we grew with that guy. And you know, he's one of the largest brick distributors in the United States. Well, that's good to hear. That'll be some good encouragement for uh, other folks that are wanting to do the same thing there. When it comes to these regulations and things that are changing, these electronic logging uh, devices that'll be coming into picture soon, uh, what's your thoughts on that and how it's going to change things? Well, it's going to hurt the little guy. You know, the little guy, um, we feel well, the big major companies are going to try to put the little guy out of business with electronic log. And, um, you know, the little guy, if he sits for two or three hours a day, um, he's going to take a nap or, or while he's getting loaded or unloaded. So what it's going to do, it's, I feel that it's going to hurt the little guy um, and try to push more freight to the larger companies that can afford to just leave a truck set for 10 or 12 hours. Our biggest complaint about that is we have people where we live right outside of Washington, D.C. that leave every morning at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, go to D.C., work for the federal government, and then get home till 6, you know, 5, 6 o'clock in the evening. These people put in more hours than the truck driver, and they're, they're allowed to put in more hours. You know, I always wanted to make a mention about that because you got people that were traveling uh, on the road from point A to point B and they brag about driving 16 hours, 18 hours, or non-stop without sleep. Uh, well, how's that work out? Well, you know, with the modern day trucks, it's just like this truck right here. This truck rides as good as my wife's Cadillac Escalade. And with the modern day technology of these trucks on air ride, air ride trailers, Man, these guys can sit and ride in these trucks. It's not a physical strain on your body like the old trucks. And I think that's where some of it, they're still looking at the old trucks of making you tired and fatigue. And, and you know, with these new trucks, you're not getting as tired and fatigued with all the new updated equipment. They don't never go out and, and really get in a truck and see. You know, there's not much different driving these trucks than it is a big motorhome. These guys drive these 40-foot motorhomes. They have cars behind them. My neighbor drives from down here in Florida or will drive straight through all the way to Virginia. A 14, 15-hour trip. But it's okay for him to do that in a motorhome. But we guys, us guys, can't do it to make a living. Yeah, it's a little lopsided. Well, Mike, I want to say thanks uh, for riding along with me and letting the, the people out there get a good look at the truck that you built. It's a great themed truck, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to enjoy it uh, wherever you go. 
Thank you, Chris. I really enjoy it. And, you, you know, I, I, I look at you as a friend and just not as a, a person in the working industry. Well, we'll see you pretty soon at another show there, right? We're going we're, we're, we're gonna to do it. We want to get that awareness out there. All right, Chris. Take care, buddy. 10-4. Real deal.